Well, here we are doing Crush Crush as usual, and then we're gonna jump into Cab Fever because that's just the way life goes. Anyway, oh, you play Blush Blush. Look, it is what it is. All right, there's more I can say about it. All right. Yeah, that's sort of she's under the my blanket. It's it's so wholesome. <sighs> I can read, alright. I can read. This will be easy zero deaths, okay? Alright, here we go. The next morning I awoke to the sound of rain softly pelting the windows. The storm had passed, leaving only damp Drizzle, drizzly day behind. Kept my eyes closed and listened. Hear the faint sounds of raindrops dripping from the downspout along my house. I stretched out my arms. The bed around me was empty and cold. Oh. Mallory was gone, but I knew she had been there because I could still feel her on my skin. The cabin felt extra chilly. I got out of bed and dressed up warm, fully pair of worn out slippers made way downstairs. Where I spotted Mallory in the kitchen, and I felt my face break into a smile. She had a bucket of, and a bunch of rags out. She seemed to be cleaning quite seriously with a cloth and spray bottle in her hand. Good morning. She startled <coughs> uh, she startled upright, fumbling and dropping the spray bottle car on the floor at her feet. Sorry, sorry. I guess these slippers add plus one to my sneak ability. Maybe a little more. Mallory bent down to pick up the bottle, which stood back up. I noticed how red her cheeks were, and how the rest of her face looked almost sickly pale. Are you feeling okay? She quickly averted her gaze. I'm fine. I just got dizzy from standing up so quickly. It happens. And it I think I really believed her, but she was feeling awkward, maybe even hiding something. Had I done something to make her uncomfortable? I looked around at the sparkling kitchen and the cabinets, uh, appliances, and the dishes all gleaming like new. You must have woken up really early to get this much work done. Did you get enough sleep? What's that? Oh, yes I did. Uh oh. Then her face softened and her tone turned sincere. I think last night was the best sleep I've ever had. My heart fluttered with acknowledgement, with the memory of falling asleep with her in my arms. Good. I... I agree. She nodded and turned back to finish up her chores in the kitchen. I said to check in work stuff to boot up my computer. There was only a handful of emails needing attention. I handled those and glanced through my work... I through my work deadlines, making sure I was still on track with each of my freelance jobs. For whatever reason, I wasn't finding it easy to focus. I kept glancing out the window, then Tony and I watched the dribbling rain. It really showed no sign of... <laughs> it really showed no sign of stopping. I noticed an empty glass I left out on the table outside was filled to the brim with rainwater. The soaked wooden planks on the deck looked like dark caramel. I thought about coming... No, in the coming winter, I'd... I have to show Mallory how to protect the garden and the hens and the bees and when the colder weather came. And then there was all the fun things we could do. I wondered if we were go to Tobbo gaining, gaining before or had a bonfire out in the snow. If I could some, find somewhere aligned to buy marshmallows and order them right away, they might get dropped off sometime in the winter. There came a sudden I and thud from the kitchen. I jumped nearly knocking my coffee mug off the desk. Mallory? No. She didn't answer. I stood up quickly and walked over to see what happened. My throat tightened as I looked past the counter. Mallory laid sprawled on the floor, her cheeks red and beads of sweat gleaming on her forehead. Her eyes were closed, her head gently lolling on the, to the side. Mallory! 
Rush her aside, dropping to my knees and popping her in my arms. The touch of the skin warm my hands. She was burning up. A groan left her lips. Her eyes fluttered open. Mallory, are you okay? Hey there. Um, why are we on the floor? Her gaze seemed to drift past me as though she was having a hard time focusing. You must have fainted. I knew something wasn't right. Why didn't you tell me? I... I'm fine. It was just a sudden dizzy spell. I haven't eaten breakfast, that's probably it. Oh, Panda Lover SPS is back. Yeah, unfortunately Mallory fell, so you, you came at a very interesting time, I will say that. Like... I'm sure you remember what happened last night. You know, she sleeps with us. In the bed. And... You know, she wakes up. You know, before... MC or Marshmallow in this case. And apparently she was cleaning the whole kitchen and then uh she wasn't feeling right and you know apparently she has a thing where she just keeps lying. And look, she's saying dizzy spells, so is she just a like a collection of all the crush crush girls? You know? Because that's what I'm getting at right now, but how's your Thursday, right? Yeah, today's Thursday because tomorrow's Friday. And then Saturday and Saturday I have plans to do normal stream, but I have plans in the morning. So so that'll be fun. Discord notification, what's going on? Oh. It's a blush blush announcement. Uh it is what it is, that's fine though. I don't I'm not gonna go crazy. It's been great. That's good that it's been great. Because anything less than good, well in this case great, you know, isn't as good, you know. And yes, I have two cans of soda, okay, one of them's from yesterday because I'm lazy. But does anyone care? <laughs> Maybe not. And no, my room isn't usually always that dirty, it's just, you know, last night I stay up till midnight. Everything was fine for today, but, you know, I don't want to keep repeating that. You know? And then I, it was an interesting day, it just started, wasn't downpouring, but it was a very nice, like, very nice, uh, what do you call it? Rainfall, it wasn't too heavy, it wasn't too light, but it was enough to cool everything down. And the drive home was was pretty cool, you know. I like I like driving in the rain at all, even though it's not always the safest to drive in the rain, you know. But I can feel her body, Bart. But I can feel her body <laughs> starting to tremble. Her skin felt fever hot, and yet there was goosebumps on her arms and legs. She, my instinct was down to make sure she was okay. I lifted her up off the floor. Oh my! What? Doing? Ah, put me down. All right. Quickly carried her over the couch, put her down. There, I covered her in blankets and tucked her in tightly in my face, said with grim determination. Brushed her hair back to feel her forehead and ignored the anxious way my stomach clenched. I darted back into the kitchen, grabbed temperature scanner from a drawer, and returned to Mallory's side. Honestly, I'm fine. I probably just overworked myself. Oh, not buying it. Held up the scanner, it seemed to take forever. And eventually, the. I can't read. I get... For some reason, I can't read when chat is here. Like, even if. Usually, my phone is watching stream, but like. Oh my god. Why is it always chat? It's not like just your fault, Panda Lover, alright? For some reason, when I put myself on the stage, I just start dying. Like, even though I see one when my one viewer when my phone's watching, because you know I just watch it to see what you know, like the average viewer would most likely see, or at least the average non-sub viewer would see. But either way, that's there, and for some reason I still fucked up. 
I held the, up the scanner, it seemed to take forever and ever to come up with a reading. But then my heart sank. You definitely have a fever. Uh oh. Mallory seemed to shake under the blankets. Seeing her like this, like so helpless and uncertain, made my heart feel like it was being painfully squeezed. Is it your leg? Let me look at it. Maybe you've developed an infection. <sighs> when did you start feeling sick? This morning? We can get your temperature under control with some aspirin, no worries. And then we'll go from there. Uh oh. I don't know when I had started. I didn't know when I had started to pace, but there was. There I was. Heading this way and, and that, making my way over to the kitchen to search for whatever it was that could help her. I filled a glass of water and reached up to a cupboard and for the aspirin bottle, grateful to, grateful to have kept a supply. Except it wasn't there. Where was it? I, had I misplaced it? Maybe Mallory had put it away somewhere else by mistake. Brought her the glass of water anyway and used the damp cloth to cool her forehead. I... Shh. Just relax and let me take care of you for a minute, okay? She opened her mouth to argue, probably, but back down when she saw the look in my eyes. I moved to her feet and pushed a, uh, pushed back the blanket to expose her injured leg, and I carefully unwrapped the gauze and peeled back the bandages to see what was going on. There was bruising around the wound, it was still a bit swollen, but then it only had been a few days, healing process for some of this would take weeks. I should be keeping a closer eye on this. Check my head. Drink your water, okay? And you should have something to eat. What would you like? I'm not really hungry. I just feel a bit tired. That's what they all say when they're sick. Not just women though, anyone. Myself included. I'm sure I'll feel good as new if I just have a little nap. <laughs> well, I don't a concerned sigh, but agreed. After tucking her in a little tighter, I crossed the back into the kitchen and stood there aimlessly for a minute or two. I didn't know what to do. Make her a pot of soup, said my brain. Great idea, brain, I thought. Carrots, onions, celery, potatoes. Potatoes? Oh no, of course I don't have potatoes. She ate them all. I wired myself in the search kitchen for ingredients, then began roughly chopping up what I had. There was some rice in the pantry I knew, and some peas in the freezer, so I was tipping, or soon I was tipping my super ingredients into a pot with a shower of salt and dried parsley. Covered it all with the stock I made from chicken bones and uh, veggie scraps, and then set it to simmer. When I crept back over to check on Mallory, found her deeply asleep. I exchanged a damp cloth on her forehead and piled more blankets around her, then and then just sat and watched her, feeling dismayed. Deep down I knew what this could be, but I didn't want to think about that and I didn't have to think about it. I didn't want to believe it, and if I had every reason to believe it, you know, I stood up and returned to the kitchen giving Kate. Gave the bubbling soup a stir and remembered that remember the aspirin I started searching for it again, checking each drawer and cabinets. I searched in the bathroom and in the living room, even getting down on my knees to see if it rolled beneath some furniture. Then when I spotted it hidden uh, beneath the couch where Mallory was resting, I reached under the couch, grabbed a bottle, feeling an immense dread began to, f to form within me, where I could tell by the weight of the bottle and the sides as I turned it. But I had to, I had to see it to believe it. I popped off the cap and looked inside. Bottles empty, at least, at least twenty, maybe thirty tablets gone in less than a week. I looked up Mallory's sleeping face. I jumped at a loud thwack at the window. I actually wondered if someone had thrown a rock. It was more likely a bird that had flown into the glass, especially considering how clean it has been since Mallory came to stay. Went to the window to check, sure enough, a large black bird dead on the porch. Appeared to snap its neck when it hit the window. It is what it is. Mallory would hate to see that. Glanced back at her, a little worried. I wake her up by taking by talking to myself, but even the loud noise of the bird hitting the window had it caused her to stir. 
in that moment I realized that I was still clutching the empty aspirin bottle. I looked down at it. She must have taken them in secret, but why? For the pain of, in her leg? Or for s some other ailment? An overwhelming sense of frustration washed over me in that moment. Without thinking, my hand squeezed the bottle so tightly that it broke. I threw the broken bottle into the trash and stormed outside to deal with the dead bird body. It was, wasn't until the evening that Mallory woke up. She started coughing right away even as she sat up clutching the blankets close to herself. Huh? <laughs> what? What time is it? Don't get up. At least not so fast. Let me help you. Sitting in the kitchen tending the soup that had been keeping warm for hours. I looked around groggling, rubbly, rubbing her eyes. Mm, but it's night time. Why did you let me sleep so long? I only wanted to rest for an hour or so. That's not what your body wanted. I'm glad you got some rest anyway. It was clearly much needed. Though I had told her not to move yet, she bundled the blankets around her and made her way over to the kitchen. Hi. All of these look so good! Like, they all look really good! Man, this... This is really fucking good. She leaned against the support beam, her cheeks were still red, her eyelids looked heavy. The way she wrapped the blanket around herself made her resemble a colorful, colorful turtle with her long, slender arms poking out to hold onto the beam. How do you feel? My muscles are a bit achy, but I don't feel cold anymore. I think all the blankets you piled on top of me helped. Not in and turned my attention back to the stove. I wanted to ask about the aspirin, but I was nervous. Wait, are you cooking? She took a step towards me, trying to peer into the pot and wobble at a return to the support be looked like as though she barely had any strength to stand. I bit my tongue not wanting to over wanting to be overbearing. I'd get her to sit back down by offering some food. I am. It's ready to eat now. Go have a seat and I'll bring you a bowl. I half expected her to argue, but uh, to insist she could get her own bowl or that I should sit while she served me, but instead she just backed away and went back to sit at the table. It looks really good. Thank you for making it. My pleasure. I bet you thought I had no cooking skills. Well, it's finally my time to shine. Exactly. <laughs> she laughed half-heartedly. I look forward to seeing what you're capable of cooking, senpai. It is what it is, alright? She folded her blanket neatly over the chair beside her, then placed her arms on the table to form a pillow for her head as she sat with her head down until I set a bowl of soup beside her. She leaned, over, she leaned over the steaming bowl with her eyes closed, holding back her hair as she breathed in slowly. I use lots of spices. They make all the difference when flavoring a dish. Give her a little wink and she smiled. Bon appetit. <laughs> we both raised steaming spoonfuls of soup, uh, blowing, them, uh, blowing on them softly, only Mallory's ex- Exhalation turned raspy, hitched, and she started to cough. She dropped her spoon back into the bowl and held her throat. She drew a deep breath, looking dismayed. So sorry. Too spicy? No, I, I can't. I don't know why. I tried her best to stifle a cough cost with success. Nervous laugh came out of my mouth. <laughs> Those autumn allergies are so annoying, am I right? She answered. She was breathing very slowly and focused very hard on bringing a spoonful of soup to her mouth. 
She slurped it and honestly, she looked like she wanted to throw up. That bad? No, no, I... <laughs> she was racked with another coughing fit. Her chest seemed to rattle with each breath. I couldn't stand seeing her like this. I went to her rubbing her back as I pushed a glass of water into her hands. Here, drink some. She nodded and clutched the glass hard, trying to give her best drink while her chest heavy heaved. After a minute, she had managed. A minute later, after she'd managed to take a few steps, she was able to breathe with a little more. Of uh, breathe a little more easily. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I can't seem to <laughs> stop. You don't have to be sorry. She was beginning to roll down her face. They splash onto the table and her into her neglected soup bowl. What if? Shh. <laughs> more tears dripped down from her eyes, more coughs rattled in her chest. You don't have to worry. Everything will be okay. All you need to do is rest and let me take care of you. This will pass. I think I maybe just want to lie down. Okay. I'll help you upstairs to the bed. He'll be extra comfy there. She gave a small nod. Her eyes were puffy and red as she gathered up her blankets in her arms. We headed for the stairs. I walked with her, taking the steps one at a time and holding her in a case. She lost her strength. Her skin felt even hotter, burning me even through her sleeve. She needed a fever reducer. That was certain. I made a mental note to check when the new bottle of aspirin in order would arrive. When we made it upstairs, well, once we made it to the upper floor, Mallory pushed me away and started coughing into the to her blankets, doubling over and trying to uh, trying to muffle the sound of her pain. I unfurled I unfurled the bed covers and helped her climb in, straightening out her collection of blankets and pulling all the covers over, up over her. All these blankets are so, so heavy. <laughs> I can barely move. Good. That means you're tucked in safe and sound. <laughs> Don't kill her. <laughs> I brushed her hair back, tracing the side of her burning face with my fingertips. I'm going to get you some water and things, and then I'll be back, okay? I hurried back downstairs and started loading up the tray with water and a few damp face coughs and her uneaten bowl of soup. I wanted her to have it right there beside her the minute she had an appetite. But of course that wouldn't be enough. I racked my brain for anything I had in the house to help drive her fever down. Then it hit me. My mother used to talk about the healing properties of basil and garlic. I I couldn't quite recall the specifics, but it was something. I had both of those items growing in my home. I rushed over to the kitchen to fill it all with water that was coming up to a boil. I darted to the aquaponics room. There were four medium-sized basil plants sitting happily under their grow lights, waiting for me to harvest their emerald petals. In that moment, my heart inflated twice inside the bowl of joy that I might finally be able to do something to help soothe Mallory's pain. I a handful of leaves from all the basil plants which were different strains but I didn't think it would matter. Next I dug out some garlic and extracted a homemade jar of honey that was sitting on the back shelf. Man this is deep. Looking at all the plants and fish, I did one last scan in case there was anything else I could use. An impulse spotted a bright red hibiscus flower in bloom and plucked it. The lone flower had an unusual bright color amongst all of the other dark leafy greens. Dashing back to the kitchen, I added more garlic, basil, and honey to the boiling water. Un Concoction probably wouldn't taste very good, but I hope it would soothe her throat and help her with the cough. Delicately, I placed the flour on the tray along with a mug of uh, freshly brewed tea. The smell was overpowering. 
Maybe she wouldn't be able to smell it. <laughs> Sending the stairs, I could hear Mallory coughing. She wasn't trying to stifle it anymore. Uh... I paused on the steps waiting for her to finish laying it out. A small groan followed the coughing bit. I'm the rest of the way up the stairs, plastering what I hope was optimistic expression onto my face. Hey, I'm back. And I brought you your soup, in case you have an appetite. Also, some tea that should help with that cough. She pulled the of the covers close to her face in a poor attempt to hide herself. R rested the tray next to the bed and placed it placed one of the damp cloths on her forehead. Even even though she's not feeling good, she's the, the art is still just so, so fuck good. In the dim light of the bedside lamp, I could see trickles of sweat on her face, neck, and breast. Thank you, but you're doing too much for me. Please, it doesn't feel like enough. Isn't there anything else I can get for you? Her expression turned into a perplexed one for a moment, then she forced a little smile. Well, now that you mention it, I could use some tissues. Ah, right. I've got some in this drawer here. Ta-da! <coughs> she took the packet of tissues and turned her face, coughing a wet, brutal cough. Why are you so determined to take care of me? Her gaze was filled with hope and confusion. I took her hand in mine and gave a small squeeze. You would do the same for me, wouldn't you? Her lips parted and her wide eyes opened wide. She gave a soundless nod of reassurance. It's a no-brainer. I care about you and want you to feel better. It's as simple as that. There was a long silence between us, exchanging our knowing looks with gentle hands squeezes. I thought about the aspirin, 20 or 30 pills that disappeared in the space of a few days. Hey, I found the aspirin bottle, by the way. <gasps> she gasped, pulling her, pulling back her hand from mine to cover her face. I'm so sorry. I should have <coughs> said something sooner. I mean, yeah, you should have. Was it for your leg to stop it hurting? Or did you, did you know you were developing a fever? You know what? It doesn't matter. I placed an order for more. It should be here tomorrow or the next day, I think. I want you to know that I'm grateful to have you here. And I care about you very much. Parting her fingers to let her eyes peek through, she slowly lowered her defenses. I don't want to be sick. I know. I don't want you to get sick. I'm not worried about that. You can't be near me. You need to stay away. I'm... Stretch out next to her on the bed, my face resting close to hers. I'm staying right here, by your side, no matter what. She turned to, to look at the tray of soup with water and tea beside it. What a pretty flower. Where did it come from? She reached over to gently pick up the scarlet blossom. From my fish garden, or whatever you called it. <laughs> it must have opened up today. I don't remember seeing it when I fed the fish yesterday. It's beautiful. What type of flower is it? A hibiscus. They only bloom for a short while, so we're lucky we got to see it. She lay there with her eyes closed with flower pressed to her nose. The petals make a wonderful tea. I'll make you some with the other blossoms, if you like. Mallory opened her eyes, but I but didn't look at me. She was staring into space deep in thought. What is it? Hmm? Oh, nothing. The rain sounds nice. I think it's making me sleepy. didn't quite believe that it seemed that there was something she didn't want to say, but I couldn't push her out. That's perfectly alright. You have sweet dreams now. 
Good night. Lay there watching her breathe, counting the minutes between each coughing fit, the resting of my hand on her burning chest so I could feel her heartbeat. I had been somewhere like this before. My parents. I had tried my best to care for them when they were sick. I had been so afraid, but I had it gotten sick, a part of me also wondered, even hoped, that it might that I might be immune. That thought in the back of my mind, I hadn't eased my fear of strangers, Mallory, of Mallory, they first appeared in my life, but now, I didn't care. Either way, all I wanted for her is to get better. Eventually, I drifted to sleep too. Oh boy. This ain't good. In the dead of night, something woke me up. The sound of the wind, an animal, whatever it was, that had pulled me out of some dream. I sat up and listened. The night was quiet, nothing but crickets and white noise. I realized I ne really needed to pee. Carefully, not as not to wake Mallory, I got out of bed. I headed downstairs to the bathroom, half asleep in the dark. Once I was done, I went to the kitchen for some water. I stood by the window with my glass, looking at the, at the sleeping world. I wasn't used to being awake at this hour, it was a little eerie. I glanced up at the dark cloth while Mallory slept for a while. Her coughing had kept me and her and me awake, but it had rubbed her, her Really? Well, hi YouTube. Oh, great. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 